if you're young coming up in life, what can you do to make money right now? That's a good question. I can answer. Do you want to, should I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Right. I think that we live in an attention economy. I think that people who can garner attention are going to be good at making money one way or another. I think we now live in a world where you have spectators and you have people who produce. It's the world is split in a binary divide between the two. And not everybody is designed to be a producer. Some people are designed to be a spectator. If I was, obviously I am a producer naturally by heart because I've lived a very diverse life. I have a lot to say and I consider, not, it doesn't matter what I consider. People consider my words valuable, obviously. So here I am. But if I was a spectator, let's say, and I didn't feel like I had the confidence or the knowledge or the charisma to sit on a camera and interest people, then I would try my very best to prove myself useful to a creator. And by joining their ecosystem and working alongside them, that's probably the best and easiest way to make money. There's a whole bunch of people out there that have the star factor, but they don't have the systems and the teams around them to truly be successful. So I would come along and say, listen, you can be the, sh the showman. I'll be the blood and guts underneath. And uh, we can do very, very well. I truly still believe as fucked as the world is with the matrix and the suppression and the inflation and the fed and all the shit we talk about. If you're a person who can turn up on time with a firm handshake, Oh who is, shit. Who is genuinely competent who doesn't lie to anybody. You're going to be fine. You're That's the destiny take. Yo, I'll vibe off that 1 million percent. The one thing that you can always do in life, you can be the most worthless, retarded, crippled, fucked dude, like ADHD, whatever the fuck, every problem. If you can be a guy that always shows up five minutes early and you are dependable, you're reliable, you're like, get shit done, like in a timely manner, and you're communicative, you are so far ahead of so many people. Um, I've said this so many times. You can ask Cake, you can ask Jader, you can ask Mr. Moot, you can ask Dan. There have been a lot of premium talent people that I've had the, I've worked with. And then there have been like middling talent people. And if you can respond to an email within 24 to 48 hours, if you can deliver on a deadline, if you can communicate really well, you are so much better to work with than like the struggling schizophrenic artist who's like an amazing artist, but they're not reliable. They don't communicate. They'll go months without returning an email that you have no, you can't keep track of them at all. Like being a person that's just like five minutes early everywhere and is ruthlessly dependable is so fucking good. That is such a good skill to have. Holy shit. <clears throat> Ever gonna starve. You're always going to be able to make good money if you're a genuinely honest, hardworking person. Yep. I've never met an honest, hardworking person who will be there at 9 a.m. like you asked him to be, who completely fails the boat. Yeah. So I think a lot of people who are still out here failing, they have a bunch of excuses. And yeah, we talk about how hard it is and it's true. But if you're genuinely about it and you can find somebody with that star factor and align yourself to them, I think you can make money no matter who you are. That's, I think, the best way to make money. So basically be a YouTuber. It's not no. about being a YouTuber. It's not about, it hasn't even got to be a YouTuber. It can be anything. It can be a, you can find a sorry, fucking star salesman and find a way to help his ass. I'm you. saying you don't always have to be the star. The biggest mistake a lot of people make is, and especially in the Western world, because we're, I talk about this all the time. I was, I was speaking about this with somebody else. I was saying America's strength and its weakness is the it, same thing. America's strength is that everybody is taught they're so unique and special and valuable. And then when you get those unique and special people, they rise to the top because they're really pushing at it from the start. But there's a lot of misery created out of people that think they're special and unique and ultra talented, but they're not really, right? And that's why you guys do so, you guys. But this is why America does so fantastic in, let's say, the Olympics, right? Because everyone believes that they can be a sports star and everyone works so hard, et cetera. And this is why you have so many talented people, so many creatives, so many movie directors, et cetera, because everyone's told they're fantastic. But the truth is not everybody's fantastic. And the people who are not fantastic end up frustrated. And that's why you have so much fucking crime, rob a bank, get rich or dry trying, gangsters, gangbangers. Because there's a whole bunch of people in America who think they're too good for a job and they are really not too good for a fucking job. This is the Kevin Samuels take too. And I think Kevin Samuels did a good job at, from the little that I've seen of him, from checking everybody from having unrealistic expectations. Most of his content seemed to be shitting on women, but he'd shit on men too. He would attack men that thought that they were looking, that, that he thought were looking for way more than what they actually should, who were kind of bums, who, you know, you're trying to find a 22 year old supermodel and you're like a 27 dude working at 7-Eleven, like you need to be more realistic about your expectations. And I think Kevin Samuels was good and that he told women that were of a certain class to like respect your the guy that you're with too Like you can have a guy that's earning 40 50 thousand a year He could be a great guy great for you great everything like they don't have everybody doesn't have to be like the fucking leader The champion the seven million sub youtuber or whatever, right? Yeah That's the truth. Whereas if you look at other cultures, it's the difference, right? If you go to Asia or you go to some of these other places You'll go to school the very talented kids will be taken to the side. You're the top 1%. You're going to a separate class. And if you're not put in that separate class, you know you ain't shit. <laughs> you're just like, okay, I'm working in the factory. Yes, sir. That's my job. And you're just going to do your job.
because the ego ain't there. So the ego is a fantastic thing for America, but it's also a detriment. So it can, it can play both ways. But um, I think if you know the value that you bring, bring to the world, if you understand what you bring, then you could kind of put yourself in a position to win because we're not all going to be, like you said, leaders. Some people are followers. So. But, but, but this is my point. When, when everyone has an ego, everyone wants to be the king on the chessboard. Yeah. The, you don't I win. feel like I used, when I was talking to Sneeko, didn't I actually use the exact phrase, like too many chiefs and not enough Indians? Like there's a name for this. Like it's it's a well-observed thing where everybody thinks they can they want to be a leader and everybody wants to blah, blah, blah. In the chess game by having endless kings, that just gives you a bunch of vulnerabilities. Everyone has to know their role and play it. I've played the role of fucking pawn, knight, the whole, my whole life. I was pawn, knight, bishop, rook. You know, I played them all. But you always and wanted to be the king. It's not that I wanted to be. It's that if you're truly destined to be, you'll end up in a position where you're going to be. This also kind of aligns with kind of my virtue take where I think like the, the where I'm at right now in life is that like basically different people are good at different things. And I think you kind of owe it to yourself and the world to pursue what it is you're best at. Uh, not everybody is like cut out to be like a Hollywood entertainer or not everybody is cut out to be like a leader of a multi-million dollar. But there's like nothing wrong with that. Um, and that doesn't have to be. It's not like if you weren't one of those people that your life sucks. Like I think there's plenty of people um, living lives, earning. 40, 50, 60,000 a year that are living like tremendously awesome, wonderful lives. Like that's super possible. Um, the idea that you have to be like one of these like leader people is just not true. I don't think. Seen as a king of your empire, wherever your empire is or whatever it is. God has a plan for all of us. My plan was to do my job to the best of my ability, whatever my job was at the time. People call me arrogant, et cetera, et cetera. I spent fucking 11 years obeying my coach like he was God. Run here. Okay, seven miles, 4 a.m. Oh, fuck. All right. I, I just listened. I didn't get successful by running my mouth. I didn't get successful by knowing everything. I got successful by listening. I listened to somebody else. I got a lot of emails after that combo too. And I should have been pointing out more things. I, I didn't even think about it. But like, I got a lot of emails for like, bro, like 90% of CEOs have college degrees. And then also, what do successful people do? Do I, I think I count as a successful person. Like I told my kid, like Nathan is going to college and you're getting a degree before you ever hop into YouTube shit. Most likely you're going to like, I'm not going to let him just like, oh, I'm out of high school. Time to do this shit. Fuck you. you. Go to college, get a degree. And I think if you look at most successful people, what are they trying to do? Like, what do successful people do? They're literally known for like trying to scam schools to get their fucking kids to get into the best schools, right? What was that whole thing where they're like paying off like school administrators to let like they're trying so hard. Like wealthy people will cheat to get their kids into the best fucking schools. Like that's how fucking important it is for them. Um, so the idea that like, um, that, oh no, like wealthy people know that school is a waste of time. Like haven't you heard of these two exception people, like exceptional people? It's like, well, Musk got degrees, fucking Bezos got degrees. Bill Gates was super smart before he even went into college. He was working on shit. Zuckerberg got degrees. Like 99% of these like super billionaire people are all really well-educated people. It's very, 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 very rare that somebody comes out of nothing and becomes like a billionaire. That is exceptionally rare. Most of these people are really well-educated. Fucking Donald Trump! I'm pretty sure. Wait, let's check. I don't actually know. Donald Trump Wikipedia. I know this motherfucker graduated from some bullshit. Trump family? Must have. This motherfucker skipped the draft to finish school, okay? Did he finish? Hold on. Oh, look, even Donald Trump got his four-year degree at Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. And this guy came for money and had a dad that gave him money, okay? And even this motherfucker finished his four-year degree, okay? To my father my entire life, but listen to my coach my entire life. I just done exactly as I was told. He said punch, he said jab, I jabbed. That was it. So I just obeyed. So I played my, I played my part and played my role for a very long time before I got to a position now where I have I don't know, a total of maybe 60, 70 people working for me across all these different Damn, industries. Damn, that's now insane. I'm the, the empire, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, you're saying I always knew I wanted to be king. I don't think I did. I just wanted to be very, very competent and do my job very, very well. And, and even now him. to this day, if, I, if, if Elon Musk and I were to have a conversation one day and he were to say, I want you to help me with X, I'm not going to walk in there saying, I'm the king though, bro, top G. I'm like, you know what, Mr. Elon, sure. I'll be the knight. Let's go to fucking Mars. <laughs> like, there's too much ego involved. Yeah. And, and this is the problem with a lot of people. Egos hold them back. Ego is going to get your ass killed. Ego will put you in the fucking morgue. It'll put you in jail. And it'll also destroy a lot, of, a lot of opportunities. I can tell you another story. I have a whole bunch of friends who are still broke, uh, even though they've watched my come up and I've tried to help them a million times and they'll message like, hey, man, just had to leave my job again. And they're trying to hint at borrowing money. <laughs> I'm like, why? What happened? Man, my boss, he's fucking rude to me. Bro, you're a wagey and he's your boss. do <laughs> Do your job. What the fuck? Do your job. Like, you can't be messaging me saying, oh, yeah, you're top G. I'm a G. I don't take shit from my boss. Well, you have to, too. You're the boss. That's the game. You have to know 
your part and play it well. How much of it is determined by God? You're saying, I'm wondering what you think of the difference between free will and determinism. You're saying that some people are meant to just be pawns, but how much of it is dependent on your mentality and your belief as a youngin? People decide to be pawns. Nobody is destined to be anything they don't decide themselves to be. If I hate that um, people are like, uh, one. I whatever, it's all good. But people on my subreddit were triggering me. They're like, oh, he said it so much more eloquently than Destiny did. Like, well, yeah, he did. But that's because every three words I would try to speak, Snake would jump down my fucking throat saying essentially the same shit. I couldn't get fucking anything out without Snake screaming down my throat over it. It's like, Jesus. If you're truly uncomfortable with something, you can't exist there. When I was a pawn, I did my job to the best of my ability, but what, let's, let's change it. When I was a brokey, I knew I was a brokey. Uh, trust me, I knew very well I was a brokey. My life reflected it, as did my bank balance. But I was uncomfortable in it to a position where I couldn't sleep at night. I had sleepless nights just laying there thinking, how the fuck are people buying Ferraris? I can't pay rent. This doesn't make sense. I have to escape. I can't live this way. If you're genuinely uncomfortable, if I set you on fire, you're going to stand up. You're going to move. If I set you on fire and you're chilling... Then you can't say that the fire's burning. The people who are broke and they have been broke for years and years and years and they're still sleeping in late playing video games Base. are comfortable enough being broke to stay broke. I, I couldn't be comfortable in that position. If you put me in a shitty position, I'm so desperately uncomfortable. We can change it from money to something else. Dude, what is this? If I was morbidly obese, it wouldn't last long. I'm telling you now. With me, I couldn't do it. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I'd be mad at myself. I'd be angry. I'd be self-conscious. I'd fix it. The person who's been morbidly obese for 10 years and goes, I'm trying. You ain't fucking trying. You are very comfortable and very happy to be who you are. Facts. So anybody who's a pawn is comfortable and happy being a pawn. Otherwise, they wouldn't be one anymore. They at least have moved up. So when I say determined by God, what I'm saying is that God is producing all of us. I believe God exists. We're all made in his image to a degree. And certain people have looked at their place in life and said, this is okay. This is enough for me to sleep at night. And if that's fine, you're going to sleep. But if you were like me, if you're looking at your bitch going, she's a seven, my car is broke, my car ain't shit, apartment's small, I know I'm better than this, I have to find a way to escape, then then motivation and the whole idea of motivation becomes a, it gets destroyed. People say, I don't have motivation. I didn't never had motivation. I had a burning desire to fucking fix my life. I didn't need to wake up and get mo. I didn't have to watch YouTube to want to make some fucking money. I was like, I wanted money. Like I didn't need YouTube to tell me, bro, you're broke. Like, so I, I don't think that anybody is destined to be a pawn. I think people decide to be pawns. And I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of it. I can sit here right now as a multimillionaire, as a multimillionaire, a person who has hundreds of millions of dollars, and I can say, if you go to CobraTape.com right now, you can sign up to a free newsletter and I will email you every day for free lessons from a multimillionaire for free. All it's going to take is 13 seconds of your time to go to CobraTape.com and sign up to the email letter. And maybe 10% of the people watching will do it. And 90% will go, mm. uh, hey man, being broke sucks. Because they're fucking dumbasses. Well, that's their decision. I, I don't be I believe it's decisions. People who are broke decided to be broke. It really is not that difficult to make money out. I don't really, I don't really don't think it is. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.